This is Christina Moffat, and I am here to explain Kasha's Snowflakes perimeter. To begin, we have an equilateral triangle whose side length is equal to one unit, which gives us a total perimeter of three units which we get from adding together the one unit on each side. To make our first iteration, we take our original triangle and divide each side into thirds. And with these two middle points, we are going to rotate one about the other 60 degrees, so we have a new triangle on each side, and we connect all the dots so we have four one-third length segments. To get our perimeter for this new first iteration snowflake, we have three sides, and each side is comprised of four one-third length segments. For the second iteration, we take our first iteration snowflake and divide each of those four sides into four more sides and then we have 16 segments for each side of the triangle and we have three sides of the triangle so our perimeter for the second iteration is 3 times 16 ninths. For the nth iteration, take our snowflake that we've created and we find the perimeter of each snowflake to be three sides times four thirds to the nth power, which when we plug our zero in, we get three times four to the thirds to the zeroth power, which gives us three times one and we get our three or we can take our second iteration and do 3 times 4 thirds squared, which is 3 times 16 ninths, and it shows that we get the equations we came up with earlier. And to show that the perimeter goes to infinity, we take the limit of p to the n, and that is shown to reach infinity. If we inscribe our original equilateral triangle into a circle, we can see that the area of Kasha's snowflake is bound to the area of the circle, whereas the perimeter increases to infinity. Therefore, we have a finite area for an infinite perimeter.